One thing we don't want to do is overreact to Summer League. I mean, it's something where you don't want to overreact. You've seen guys dominate Summer League and then turn out to be just not very good NBA players, if NBA players at all. We've seen players do that. So you don't want to overreact. You don't want to put too many eggs in the basket of a Summer League basket. Why did I say it like that? I don't exactly know. All I'm saying is don't overreact. But I mean, is there room to react when it comes to Sharif Cooper and Jalen Johnson, who at the time, a lot of people, myself included, yes, I'm taking credit for that, even though I'm by no means a draft expert. And these were kind of like two of the only prospects that I actually looked into, mainly Sharif Cooper. When I said those would be steals for the Atlanta Hawks, and now I'm just going to double down on it because I saw them dominate Summer League and play really well in Summer League, where the competition was never really going to be up to the standard of the guys like Cooper and Johnson. Yes, that would be reacting, if that makes any sense. So I'm reacting to what they've done in Summer League and basically just forecasting that these guys are going to be steals like I predicted and looking ahead to what they could be in the NBA. Maybe this year, maybe going forward, because the Hawks have a deep team. I mean... It's insane. I'm just going to talk about it right now because I was going to talk about this in a bit, but I mean, the depth of this team and just from a young talent perspective, I mean, these are guys that are 23 and younger, 23 and younger. This is who they have. Trey Young, of course, John Collins, Big O, Giannis Stopper, Embiid Stopper, the best center stopper in the league. The man is, he's going to be a beast. Big O, just watch out for him. Once he gets back healthy, he's going to be different. Sharif Cooper, Jalen Johnson, guys they just drafted who already look like steals, which we're going to talk about in this video, not the Atlanta Hawks young core, but I just got to mention it because, I mean, it's worth mentioning. Those two. Then you've got DeAndre Hunter, the Julius Randle stopper, someone who's, what, 15 points a game, he's heading into his third season. If he stays healthy, he'll be an all-star at some point in his career, I'm pretty sure of that. And Cam Reddish. Did I miss anyone? Then you can add in Skylar Mays and Kevin Herter, of course. Kayvon Herter, 27 points in an elimination game. Seven against the Philadelphia 76ers. Sent them packing in Philly. Isn't he from Philly as well? Kevin Herter, man. Kevin Herter. That's their team. Skylar Mays, as I said, you can throw him in as well, who's been impressive in Summer League and would probably be more of a rotational player if this team wasn't so incredibly deep, like I just mentioned. Not to mention Bogdanovich and Clint Capella are only 27 and 28, respectively. <laughs> it's not like they're senior citizens. They're not exactly senior citizens. And that's eight deep. Or is it nine deep? It doesn't matter. You get the point. That's a ridiculous young core. And I'm seeing parallels between them and the Denver Nuggets with in terms of the depth of a young core and also the drafting strategy because did it seem kind of obvious that Jalen Johnson and Sharif Cooper were the right selections? I'm not trying to take away from the Atlanta Hawks because they've made so many great selections from Collins to Trey to Reddish to Hunter to Herder. Like they haven't missed, which is evident by the fact they have so many good young players. You don't get that many good young players from missing consistently. They have not missed and it looks like they might not have missed again with Sharif Cooper and Jalen Johnson. That's what it's looking like right now. So I'm not going to say they've just done the obvious and well, they've done an easy thing because this is a team that clearly knows how to draft very well. And we should have known straight away when they took those guys that these are two guys that looked like steals. They go to the Hawks organization where it's a perfect fit. I'm going to talk about all of these things. Sorry, I've gone a little bit off topic, but it's just an exciting young core, is it not? It's an exciting young core. I think that's safe to say. That's It's a ridiculous young core. There's too much depth. It's, it's, it's just simply too much depth. It's actually absurd. But before I even get into that, if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you know, that would be much appreciated. Getting back to it. Sharif Cooper, Jalen Johnson, the two guys you want to hear me talk about on this video. Yes, I think it's a similar thing to what the Denver Nuggets have done, where you looked at RJ Hampton, who slipped. Michael Porter Jr., Bol Bol, hasn't been quite the success story that some people anticipated. But that kind of nature, where you have so many deep players, you don't need to look at the parallels. Trey Young, Nikola Jokic, all of these things. We know there's parallels between the two teams. But just the draft strategy, where you have so much depth, so much young talent, that you can take a chance on guys that Sharif Cooper slipped because of his shot. Jalen Johnson slipped because of maybe his attitude. His shot, I didn't exactly know all of the reasons, but... I know there were a couple of question marks over different aspects of his game, but two guys that were productive, well, Sharif Cooper in particular, and just a small sample size was unbelievably productive at college level and just looked fantastic, looked like a surefire first round pick, a surefire first round pick. And Jalen Johnson, prior to pulling out from Duke, looked like he was close to a surefire top 10 pick. They got them pretty much twice as far back as they were anticipated to go just a little bit before, if that makes any sense at all. That's what they got. And they've got two guys that fit perfectly. We'll just talk about the fit as well. But Sharif Cooper, he's going to learn from Lou Williams, Trey Young, 
two of the best small point guards in the league. He's just going to be eased into it with a veteran like Lou and then a superstar star level player like Trey Young. Is that okay? I think that's a decent way to learn your reps and just play behind those guys. He might not play a ton his first year, even though he's probably capable of playing as a spark plug at this point in the NBA, as you've seen by the Summer League, his production and everything he can do already as we anticipated. But I don't think he'll play a ton this year just based off the fact they've got DeLon Wright, Trey Young, and Lou Williams. But it's just the perfect bridging year. Lou Will, this is probably his last year in Atlanta, maybe his last year in the NBA. DeLon Wright, I'm pretty sure he's only on a one-year contract. So it just seems ideal that this is the bridging year between those guys being the veteran presence behind Trey, Trey really taking another step forward, having some more ball handlers coming off the bench with the likes of Kevin Herter and guys continuing to evolve as those kind of players, and then having Sharif Cooper step up in year two. Just the perfect fit. And then looking at what he's done in Summer League, we'll get to Jalen Johnson in a bit, but we just got to talk about what they've done in Summer League and why they look furthermore like steals because Cooper has done everything you would have expected him to do, but it's he's still done it. And he's been putting up numbers, what, about 20 and 10 or something of that nature. That's probably a little bit inflated. I had the numbers before, but now I've lost them. Like 20 and 10, something of that nature. His turnovers have been high. His three-point shooting is still questionable. That's the main reason he dropped, in my estimations, unless there was something he said in an interview or something which we don't exactly know which is why you can never be too sure when it comes to players slipping you always have to keep that in mind it looks like it was his three-point shooting his three-point shooting it's still a little bit questionable I'm pretty sure he hit all of his threes in summer league in just the one game against the Indiana Pacers where he obviously hit the game winner three he had a couple of step back threes he was shooting off rhythm I mean if he can shoot at like 35 percent if he can be a decent three-point shooter it's a steal of all steals. Even if he can just keep defenses honest, just hit open threes. That's all we need from you, Sharif. If you can hit open threes with his passing ability, with his ability to break down the defense, with his ability to just glide past guys and then kick it out to open shooters or throw it upstairs to Jalen Johnson, who are already building that John Collins x Trey Young type relationship, which could be the bench relationship. Imagine going from Trey and Collins in the starting lineup, throwing lobs regularly out in transition in the half court to then Sharif and Jalen Johnson off the bench. <laughs> it seems like a cheat code to me. It seems like they're just going to run the same offense because the team is just going to be like, we'll go from DeAndre Hunter, Trey Young, John Collins, Clint Capella to Sharif Cooper, and Yekho Kongwu, Kevin Herder, Cam Reddish. What? <laughs> Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? Like, that's a relatively okay starting lineup. Potentially, 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 potentially. Let's not get too carried away. But it could be a relatively good starting lineup at the NBA level coming off the bench. That's the depth of this talent, which I know it's not really supposed to be the part of this video, but it's relevant and it's just worth mentioning because it still blows my mind a little bit. But then getting back to it, yeah, they've already built a partnership. You've seen Sharif make some crazy passes, which was as advertised as we've seen in college and now in the summer league. He's just doing what we expected. His three-point shot has looked okay. It's looked okay. He's shooting like 38%, which as I said, was pretty much all in the Pacers game, but he hit a couple of threes off a step back in those games. He hit a couple of threes off movement. A few of those things that if he can continue to do, it's a wrap. It's a wrap because everything else he does, the way he breaks down the defense, I've mentioned it. He does have the tools. He has all of the talent. He's already building a relationship. In terms of his turnovers, that's something that I don't have any question marks over. The three-point shot, I still have question marks over. I don't know if that's guaranteed to improve. We don't know. But in terms of his turnovers, I mean, someone with a high usage rate as a young player making tough passes and playing on a new team, having a high turnover rate, I mean, that's literally everyone that fits that criteria. Literally everyone ever that's fit that criteria also has a high turnover rate. So I'm not exactly worried. I don't think there's much else to say with Sharif Cooper. We've seen what we wanted to see. We've seen the ability. If the three-point shot is there... It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Just call it a steal right now. I'm not even talking about summer league overreactions. If he can shoot the three ball going forward, everyone knows that is going to be a steal. And then looking at Jalen Johnson, another guy that if he can continue to shoot the three ball like he's done in summer league, I mean, he thinks he's the best player in the draft. And so I've got no problem with that. I know some people are like, oh, you shouldn't be like, eh. I've got no problem with that. He does have the skill set and the ability where sometimes you'll look at him and be like, yeah, I could see him being the best player in the draft. Cade Cunningham is obviously going to be the best player in the draft. Let's let's be real for a second. Come on now. Let's not be too silly. And then Josh Kitty, the Australian guy, is obviously going to be second best. But after that, Jalen Johnson, if you want to be the third best, by all means, go ahead. By all means, go ahead. And just more realistically, just getting back on track, 
we've seen what Johnson can do in the Sharif Cooper pick and rolls, getting out in transition. Defensively, he can potentially be a Swiss Army knife. He's shooting 40% from three, shooting 80% from the line, like 60% from the field. He's been efficient. He's been getting out in transition. He's been doing everything that you would have hoped to see from him. There's still a few things that you need to improve on, but just projecting forward, looking at what he could be with Trey or looking at what he could be with Sharif. As I said, coming off that second unit, just imagine that second unit, which I just mentioned before. Like, that's ridiculous. And Jalen Johnson seems like someone who would fit really, really nicely with Trey Young because similar to the Draymond Green and Steph Curry effect. Now, Johnson isn't the same kind of passer Green is just yet, but he also has shown flashes in college and now already in summer league. Like, he's got passing chops. He has the ability to make passes. He still needs to hone in on some of those turnover decisions as well, similar to Sharif, and just make a few more easier passes instead of sometimes making the more difficult passes. But in terms of when guys like Trey and Steph are getting trapped, you see what the Warriors do all the time. They put Draymond in the middle of the defense, and then they throw it over the top to him. He makes the play four-on-three opportunity. You get the point. Jalen Johnson could do the same thing. But if he's a three-point shooter, if he's more lethal as a scorer, then all of a sudden that four and three opportunity all days of the week you can't trap Trey Young because you saw him get trapped a little bit in the playoffs and the Hawks didn't have that answer immediately. Now all of a sudden if Trey Young's throwing it out of a trap to Jalen Johnson who has guard-like skills to a degree and can make guard-like passes and guard-like reads but can also get to the rim and maybe even shoot the three ball, yeah, you see how that opens up the game a lot and makes it a lot easier on Trey. So that's just projecting forward. That's getting a little bit carried away, but that's ideally what you want to do as a team. You want to project forward and see what could be best with Trey. I mean, that's what every decision you're making from now on is pretty much who works best with Trey, how does it work best with Trey, and defensively, his potential there in terms of being a switchable defender going forward, that works well with Trey. In terms of hopefully being a decent enough, reliable three-point shooter, that works. And in terms of being a guy who can be an outlet passer and an outlet kind of half-court valve release, <laughs> what am I saying, for Trey Young, similar to Draymond Green for Stephen Curry, that works perfect as well. So many things about these picks that work perfect. He's also going to have an opportunity to learn off the likes of Collins, the likes of DeAndre Hunter, Danilo Gallinari. There's some veterans, there's some depth. I don't need to go into the depth, but those guys are two guys that are looking like steals as of now, and I just wanted to mention them because they've been productive, they've been effective, they've been great. The Hawks have won a few games. Skylar Mays has been good as well. Shout out to him, but unfortunately, I'm not making a video on Skylar Mays. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I gave him a shout out, so that's cool. I wouldn't expect great things this year, evidenced by that call, which I'm not going to bring up or even mention one more time, but I believe going forward, these are guys that fit what the Hawks are trying to do. They're just perfect fits in terms of who they're playing behind, the role they're going to play in the near future coming off the bench and doing the same things that guys in front of them are already doing. So the mold, the blueprint is already there for these two guys to thrive. They're in a great organization, a team that has now developed multiple, multiple really solid young players players that are still developing it just looks like a perfect marriage it just looks really good looks really good which is why i thought i'd mention it